Okay, this is fifth hour, video one. Test, 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 one, two. Okay, we're recording. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> we've gotten into our AVID program, and this is our project window. Every project that has been done this trimester is in this computer. Like we said before, once you start a project on a computer, you have to finish it on that computer. They're not networked or anything. So. Um, what we're going to go into is continuity video one, section five. Um, whenever we make a, a project, a new project, you always go into shared. We never go into external. We never go into private. So always in shared. Always in shared. Uh, to make a new project, you of course, hit the new project button. And you type in your name right here. Um, music video. Everybody loves to produce a music video. And then you would hit OK. You don't have to change any of these, fun these settings or anything like that. We'll hit cancel. And then if music video was the project that you selected, you would just click on it, make sure that it's blue, and then you hit OK. But for today, we're going to go into section five or video and then hit OK. All right, this is our Avid layout. This is our project window where your bins will be stored. I'll talk about bins here in a little bit. Uh, your source window, it's the source. This is the record window, and then down here is your timeline. The source window has several buttons, several functions across the side. Uh, the record window has some of the same buttons up here and also down here. And then your timeline also has some of the same buttons and functions that are up on your source and a record window. All right, so um, when we go into our project window. We've got a bin. This is our this little black little box. It's called continuity video one section five bin. To open this bin up, we just double click it and it's going to open up. These are all the shots that we took yesterday when we did that short video. Uh, to shrink a bin, you just go to the edge here, click and drag it over. Uh, this is called our super bin, super bin. Super bin. Some people are drawing this out, so I'm just waiting for them. Project window, source window, record, timeline, super bin. All right, we're going to go into our, our super bin. These are all the clips that we filmed yesterday. We had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had seven shots that we took. And when we double click on this little film strip, there's a, there's a film strip, then it says uh, 00071, then it says the date, and it also says the time that we filmed it. Uh, seven, seven, or seven, two, seven, three, seven, four. It tells you the date, it tells you the time. So I, ac I accidentally brought one in from uh, wait, maybe I didn't. No, this is this is this is yours. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so when you double click the film strip, it's going to load into your source window. We're going to um, talk about these buttons. Uh, there's a rewind button, brings it back to the beginning. So if your if your uh, cursor was at the end or in the middle, you could hit rewind, it brings it back to the beginning. Otherwise, if your cursor is there, you can also just click your cursor down, and it's going to jump to that spot. Fast forward will jump you to the end. And how many frames are in one second? 30. 30. All right, so what, uh, the next button over, the third button over, this is called step backwards one frame. So going backwards here, it's going super slow. This is frame by frame. And then the next button over is frame forward. And then we'll talk about mark in next. <clears throat> Any questions so far? No questions? I will show you. If I close the super bin, thanks. Um, Jacob, where are you? Uh, what, if we were to close the super bin, I'm going to hit this little red X right here. If I close the super bin, and everything collapses. 
this little black box right here, it looks like a bin with a bunch of little folders there. If you double click that, it's going to open your super bin. And then if you notice this little bin is now white, meaning it's open. And so sometimes you want to make a new bin and you can come up here, take and make a new bin, maybe make this one your graphics. And so then that one changes to graphics. And then maybe you want to make another bin of just your music. Music. So now you have two more bins, one for graphics and one for music. It's another way to stay organized. Some people don't use those, some people do, so it's kind of your preference. When you start organizing your personal feature that you're going to film and produce, um, you can organize yourself however you want. Music, graphics, B-roll shots, interview shots. Some people just put all their stuff into one bin and then they've got like a whole bunch in here, so it's just a, it's what you prefer. It's fine. Um, another thing about your super bin here is you can name the clips. So if you click the, double click this, it's going to load in your source window. It's got our actor and actress walking forward, and so I can click on zero 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 seven one, and I can rename it uh, actors walking forward, and then hit enter. Actors walking forward, and then I can double click this one. This one's our, our low angle shot. So if I click up on the numbers, it highlights it, low angle shot. Enter, and then it just saves it. If you double click on, if, like, if, we, if we want to load 00073, you can't just click on the numbers. You have to click on this little, little icon that looks like a little piece of film, and then that will load in there. Okay, so never on the numbers, just on the film strip. Okay, and then we could we could name all these, but I'm not going to do that right now. Well, I named two of them. You know how to do that now. <coughs> Actors walking forward. So we're going to lay down an edit here. We're going to listen to the pre-roll. We'll see the shot. We'll hear the post-roll. So we're just going to look at this first shot. <coughs> Gordon. Rule nine, scene one, take one. Five. Ready in five, four, three. Five, four, three. Two, one, cut. Okay, so there's our shot one. Uh, we're going to cut out the clapboard. We're also going to cut out the pre-roll, and we're also going to cut out the post-roll. We're going to give um, this clip a certain instruction on how to do that. So let's see Ready in five, four, three. Okay, I hit the space bar to stop it. I can also hit the space bar to start it again. So if I hit the space bar, it's going to start playing. Okay, there's Marcus coming around the corner here. Um, we're going to frame it back, 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 back until I cannot see him. So he's out of there, right there. This is where I want the shot to start. So this little button right here, it's called mark in. If you hold your button over, the, you hold your cursor over the top of it, it's going to tell you what the name of the, of the function is. So I'm going to hit mark in, and you see these little tiny uh, teeth on the left side. This is telling you that your mark in is now in that shot. So now if I hit play. To make it go faster, you hit the L key about three times. Get them into the room. So this would be our out point. This is where we want that clip to stop. So the next, the next button over next to the play button, on the, to the right of the play button, is called mark out. So we will hit mark out. You see the teeth right here on the side? That's telling us that that's the out point. Doing that by putting the mark in there and putting the mark out, what we're doing is we're getting rid of the clapboard. Because in movies, you don't ever see the clapboard. You see it in the bloopers towards the end of the movie if they ever do that. Um, you never hear the, the countdown, the, the pre-roll, but 
you just want the, the best part of the shot, which is the meat right here, okay? Um, mark in, mark out. Now we would we'd want to start building our timeline. Our timeline for our movies are built down here where it says timeline. There are two ways to get this shot down into our timeline. The first is called splice in. Splice in. Two ways to get footage down your timeline. First one is called splice in. And the second one is called overwrite. I'll explain splice in first. We're going to double them up like they did in row uh, radio broadcasting or no? Not today. That's an advanced, that's an advanced editing technique. Gotcha. But we'll get to that sooner or later. All right, we're going to do a splice in here on this shot. <coughs> splice in and overwrite really don't look too much, uh, they don't look very much different when you, get the, when you get the clip laid down. But the way that they interact with other clips, that's where you're, in, where you're going to notice a difference. So we're going to hit splice in. It's going to bring it down to our timeline. And I'll say this right away. The timeline and your record window coincide with one another. They're, they're related. Whatever we do down on our timeline, so right now I'm, I'm clicking down on my mouse and I'm dragging across on the numbers. So you can see that on the record side window, our actors are moving because this little piece of video holds that shot. Okay? Another way that you can do it is if, if I bring my mouse up here and I click down and I scrub through it. That's what we call that. We call it scrubbing. I'm holding my mouse down. I'm going back and forth. I'm scrubbing through that footage just looking at it. Um, you'll notice that my, my playhead, that blue playhead down on the lower, on the, on the bottom, is also moving with what I do up on the top. So just remember your record window and your timeline coincide with one another. What you do up there also happens down below. Okay? Any tools that I use down on my timeline are also affected up here. Any tools I use up here on my record window are also affected down here. Any questions on that? That's a, that's a big chunk of information. Any questions so far on anything that we've gone over yet? No? OK. All right, so we've got our first shot. Walking, walking down, 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 down. And they go into the room. OK, let me talk about the length of, of this timeline, just to kind of give you guys kind of a bird's eye view of what you can do with this. Um, let me go to here. I'm going to go up to the record window, and I'm going to tell Avid that I want my next shot to start right here, right after this one. When they go into that room, I want my next shot to be right there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to put a whole bunch of these shots in here. I'm repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. I'm up to 10 minutes of that shot. I'm up to 15 minutes of that shot. You could sit here over your lunch break and just watch that shot over and over and over and over again. We're up to 35 minutes. We're up to 40 minutes on this shot. Oh, there's 50. I'll make a full hour. Why would you do that? That's why. There's one hour of this same shot. Nobody in the history of Farmington High School has ever made a, an hour-long movie. Avid is more than capable of, of handling an hour-long movie. I mean, we could, we could sit here for the next hour and just watch this. We have no problem with the computer crashing. We have no problem bringing in clips. So if, if you ever want to make an hour-long movie, this is where you would do it. Don't do it on your iPad, because your iPad won't be able to handle it. Okay. Do it in here. Didn't you say they edited Titanic on that? Yeah, Titanic was edited in, on Avid software, not this computer, but on the Avid software. So how do you get rid of all those Duke Control-Z? I'll them? show you. OK. So I just wanted, I wanted to show, show you that this is, this is a huge program. This is what Titanic is, is done. 
I mean, I can make this into a three-hour movie right now. So this is, it's kind of fun to watch this really, really super fast because they're just walking down the hall over and over. <laughs> if we go one more time. And you can see that playhead going, is moving. Where do they go? Are they you could, you could, this could be like a, a type of discipline. You're not, you're in trouble. You're going to watch people walking down the hall for an hour long. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions that I can answer about making this hour long movie of people walking down the hall? What's the longest movie that's been made? 40 minutes. 40 minutes is the longest movie that's ever been done at this high school. OK, 40. Uh, it was done two years ago in Video 3. And it was, it was a pretty good script. Um, if you guys know Jenna Lippum, she was in that movie. Dylan, uh, Dylan, oh man, his name escapes me. Dylan, Dylan. I'll remember it. I'll tell you later. We had, we had a good cast and crew for that movie. <clears throat> all right, so someone said, can we get rid of all that? Yes, we can get rid of all that. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things before we get rid of that, just to kind of show you some other, some of what, are these, what these other tools do. Um, if you look down here, I'm hovering over the top of this little box. It's called Scale Bar. If I click down and I drag to the right, what's happening is it's, it's zooming in to that whatever clip I'm I'm on. Um, if you see these, this black line that's separating the two shots together, that's our edit point. And then you'll see a whole bunch of edit points when you start building your, your sequences and things. So let me tell you about this. Um, this solid blue line right here, and then this dotted blue line, this is one frame of video. One frame. So let me go back to where the action is. Okay, You can see our actor and actress is going back and forth. What I do up here can also be done down here. So as that playhead moves back, that's one frame of video. One frame right here. So let me go forward here a little bit to the end of that shot. There's where our next shot comes in, and then they're going to come up around there. But this little line right here, this, this separates out the, the clip. When I put my cursor on, on the very, very end of that clip, if you look right up here, there's a little backwards L. Anybody want to take a guess on what that little backwards L means? That's the end of the clip. That's the end of the clip. Very good. That's the end of that clip. So that line right there, that's the end of the clip. Now watch, look for that little L here. I'm going to put this at the beginning of this next clip. The L switches, switches to the different spot. Now it's a forward L on this clip. Anybody know what that represents? It's the beginning of the next clip. Very good. OK. So when you're, getting, when you're doing like finite editing and you're getting down to the frame, how many frames are in a second? 30. 30. When you're getting down to that frame and you've got you to cut out a certain amount of frames, you got to get it precise. Anybody believe in preciseness in here? When you've got to get precise, you have to go down to the scale bar and go in right on top of that little edit, and that's where you would put your mark in to get rid of your extra footage here that we really don't need. Okay, let's say that right here we wanted to we wanted to see that edit really. Uh, we want to just take out this one little piece right here. Okay, so let's zoom in. There's the beginning of it. There's the L that marks the beginning of that clip. We'd go mark in there, or we could do mark in right here. Doesn't matter. And then these little tiny little arrows right here, we can go to the left, or we can go to the right. Go. Oops. Okay. Go over to the left. We're finding the end of that clip, which is. Sometimes when it takes too long, you just kind of have to, it's right there. And we'll zoom in. OK, there's the end of that clip. And we would hit mark out. 
Okay, you'll notice that there's a, there's a blue bar there. It's highlighted in blue. This means that you have a mark in, you have a mark out. Now Avid is saying, okay, what do you want to do? You want to extract it, you want to lift it, you want to copy it, what do you want to do? Okay. <clears throat> extract, what extract will do is basically like it's getting, it's getting rid of time and it's getting rid of that clip. Okay, so if I hit extract, the blue is going to go away, your mark in, your mark out is going to go away. Extract, the clip is gone, it's been taken away from the timeline, and now it's both, both sides of that, that clip have been smashed together. It eliminates that gap, okay? If I were to undo that, if I go up to edit, undo extract, it comes back, everything is back the way that I had it. Lift is another tool. When you want to lift out a shot, here's what happens. I hit lift after it was highlighted, and now there's nothing there. So I'll play this back. So now we've got about 12 seconds of just dead air. There's no video, there's no audio, it's just black. Sometimes movies will do this, like a big epic part of the movie is coming and like, boom, and it's just black. And this, the theater goes silent, and then you're waiting for the next scene to happen. Okay? The way that they do that, you just have nothing on your screen. So like that. So you just lift it out, so there's nothing there. Your mark in and mark out, you can take those out. There's a tool called Clear Both Marks. If you click that, it takes it out. So lift, let me show you lift again. If I want to lift out this shot right here, Mark in, mark out. You can also lift out empty time. It's not going to do anything. If, you press the delete button, if I hit the delete button, what that will do is it will ask me, are you sure that you want to delete the selected tracks? And the selected tracks are video one, audio one, and audio two. So if I hit OK, everything would, would be deleted. Gotcha. Yeah, so you don't want to ever do that. But we do want to do a lift. Get rid of that. It keeps that black gap. And so this is what our sequence looks like. We've got a, a black gap in between the whole entire thing. Extract. If I wanted to get rid of that space that I just created, select mark in. I could do a mark in here, or I could do mark in here. They're both related. And then mark out. You have the highlighted blue, you have your mark in, you have your mark out. Extract, that little gap right there. When I hit extract, it's going to combine this chunk of clips and this chunk of clips. Extract. Now they've been joined together and there's no gap there. Okay. That's extract and lift. Lift will give you a gap. Extract will bring everything together. Questions so far? Okay. All right, let's get rid of this whole entire piece. We've got our, we've got our first shot here. That's all we need here. We're going to go to our... There's the beginning of that shot. I'm going to go mark in. And then... Oh, actually, one more thing. I'm going to go mark out, mark in, mark out. Let's say I wanted to keep the video, but I wanted to, I wanted to just put walking music over the top of this. I want to get rid of all of the nat sound. What is nat sound? The background noise. Yep, the background noise. I want to keep the video, but I want to get rid of the audio. So here again, you've got video one, audio one, and audio two. If I select video one, see video one is already selected, but if I deselect it, if it's not blue, and audio one and audio two are selected, they're highlighted in blue, what would happen if I hit extract or if I hit lift? Take the audio out, because the audio is the one that's selected over here. These little handles here, whatever you want to change, that's what you should highlight. If we want to affect the video, keep the video selected. If we want to select 
just audio two and video one, keep those selected. If we want to just take out audio two, keep audio two selected. If we want to take out both audio one and audio two, select both of those. And now let's hit extract. All your audio is gone. So if I hit play, there's no sound. My speakers are all the way up and there's no sound. So what's the difference between audio one and audio two? Audio one and audio two. Take your, take a, take one of your fingers and plug your ear. Like, just cover it. Now talk. Hello. Can you hear out of that ear? No. Okay. Audio one and audio two kind of works like a left and right ear. It's in stereo. So if we only had, if we only had one audio, you would only have one, one side that was, yeah, it'd be like a mono, yep. Okay, I'm gonna go, you can either do edit undo or you can go control Z, either one. Let's say I just wanted to keep the audio. I wanna get rid of the video. Deselect audio, lift, or I could do extract, doesn't matter. So now I just have black with audio. So the reason why it's black, why is it black up there in the record window? Because there's no video. All right, you guys understand that. Good. What's that? I had the speakers like cranked up. That's why it was so loud. Why is there so much background noise? Static and stuff, I guess. Really good mics. Here's, here's chairs from Miss Johnson's room. Here's talking. Yeah. Okay. Any questions before we move on? Nah. Okay. We're going to extract. When we hit extract, the whole entire sequence erases. And we're going to queue up the next shot. Low angle shot. Roll nine, scene two, take one. Okay, ready in five, four, three. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, okay. All right. They're past the camera. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So there's our post roll. We aren't going to use that. Okay. So the the part that we're interested in, when we send you out to film uh, uh, a highway, how many shots do I want you to get? Twenty five. Um, this shot right here, if you look up on your record window, this is the most boring shot of the world. It's, it's, it's two people walking down a hallway. Uh, to dress this one up, if we would have had a little bit more time yesterday, I would have taken the camera and I would have, I would have walked with them and got an, gotten a low angle shot of their feet of each side. I probably would have went in front of them and walked with them, walked backwards. And then I probably would have gone behind them, gone maybe over the shoulder, kind of like a, a Jason Bourne type of over the shoulder, not a fight scene. Not, they're not fighting, but they're walking. I would have done like a walking shot. I would have, put, I would have made sure that the camera had the, the steady, steady shot feature on. So as I walked with them behind them, uh, the shot stayed steady. So, and then we would have cut all those shots together, but right now we've got this low angle shot. The more cameras that you have, the more interesting that your shot can be. Um, I always think in terms of 16 cameras. If I had access to 16 cameras filming this scene, where would I put them all? Okay, but since I didn't use 16 cameras, you, you do the shot over and over and over again until you until you've uh, 
kind of use all the idea shots that you can get. Okay. So now you kind of have a decision to make where you're going to edit this next shot to just kind of give it some life here. Um, you look around the hallway, look at their feet. Marcus's right foot is up, right there. It's, it's horizontal. I'm going to look for that same type of shot here. Horizontal. So you're stepping with your right foot forward. Right foot forward. So let's let's do a let's do a continuity error here. We're gonna bring Marcus's left foot forward on this edit. So I want you to look at his foot. That's good enough. So I'm gonna do an overwrite edit. Okay, so I want you to go from this shot, watch Marcus's foot. This is a break in continuity because he's going to be stepping with his right foot and then it's going to jump and he's going to be stepping with his left foot. Play it one more time. It happens very, very quick, so you have to kind of watch his feet. Right, right. I'll do a frame by frame. Good idea. Steps with his right foot. Left foot's coming forward. Still his right foot. I'll show you again. Stepping forward with his right foot. Right foot comes down. Left foot is off the ground. Stepping forward. And now his right foot is off the ground. Okay? That's called a break in continuity. That was on our quiz on Friday. All right? So you guys kind of understand that. Another huge break in continuity would be if our two actors switch spots. If they forgot which side that they were sitting or standing on or walking on and they switch spots, then that would also be a break in continuity. Okay? We're going to do a control Z and undo, but we are going to fix this. We're going to get the right footing here. Frame forward, right foot comes forward, right foot is about to come down. Right foot is right there. Right foot is up. Right foot is up. But the other foot. Close enough for today. Yeah. And they clear the camera. Marcus is right there. Mark out. Okay. So here's where I can really show you guys the difference between overwrite and splice in. Two ways to get footage down in your timeline. Here's the first one, splice in. Splice in, what, that, what that's going to do with this little piece right here is it's going to push it down. If everybody looks at my hand here, if this is your first clip and this is your second clip, basically what's going to happen is it's going to push it down. Okay, That's what splice in does. It pushes it down. Overwrite, what overwrite does is it will basically take it out, okay? So let me demonstrate here. So they're walking, 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 and we hit splice in, and basically it, it pushes it into the sequence, and then it pushes everything else down. So here, watch this now. You're going to see them jump back in time, kind of like uh, Marty McFly, if you're a Back to the Future fan. Okay, did you see the mistake? The yeah. person. What? The person photobombed. Well, no, it was that they started way farther back. Yeah, it started way farther back because we saved. And then went back. Yep. We saved that footage. We didn't get rid of it. We inserted the new shot, but it didn't, it didn't delete anything when you hit splice in. So splice in saves your shots, saves your footage. It doesn't erase anything. Splice in saves your shots. It doesn't erase anything. That would be one thing that I would want you to write down or remember. Splice in saves everything. It doesn't, it doesn't delete your shots after that. Splice in saves. OK. I'm going to do a Control Z or an Edit Undo Splice In. OK, we're back to the original. 
Now I'm going to show you overwrite. The overwrite is the red arrow button. And what overwrite is going to do is going to take this footage right here. And it's going to overwrite it. So now watch the edit. Okay, and then it picks it up to where. What about the girl that went in there? Nobody's going to like notice that that girl there. Yeah, but she's there and then she's not there. So what, what we could do is we could tighten that shot up. Here, let's do a control Z. Find where, find where that girl comes around the corner. We'll do it right on here. We can get rid of the girl that sticks her head from out. So she's sticking her head right out in the back. This is good. This is a good example. So we're going to frame it back. Back frame, back, 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 back. Marcus's foot is in the shot. She's out of the shot right there. And we'll hit mark out. This is where we want the shot to end. This is where we want the shot to go into the timeline. And then we will just hit overwrite. So now watch the edit. And it, it cuts out to the next shot before that girl comes out from the back from the back there. Can you like crop it though? No, you need to be sure. Like that. the video. Yep. Like if you could like bring it down. Yep, like we could. All right. Yep. You need to make sure that the thing is still right then? Yep, for continuity? Yep, it's right. Yeah, look at your right foot. Look, how, look at your right foot. See how it's coming down? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let me show you. Somebody from third hour kind of pointed this out. Okay, shut your eyes. Shut your eyes and just listen. Did you hear the edit? Can you hear the edit? No. Okay, let me turn the volume up here a little bit. Okay, this time watch the screen. Look at, the, look at where the edit point is and see if you can hear it. It's a little bit lower. The second, the second one is a little bit lower. So let me show you how to fix that. There's a way that we can fix those things. Go up to Edit Undo. We're going to take that shot out. Edit Undo. Okay. Whatever we want to affect, over here, whether it's video or audio one or audio two, if we deselect A1 and A2, not have it highlighted, when we do this edit, the only thing that's going to go into the timeline is just video. So let's hit overwrite. You'll notice that the audio has not been touched. The only thing that has a line on it is the video. So here's that same shot edited in without the audio break. And then we're back to the original. This, the actor's walking forward, actor's walking forward, low angle shot. This, this shot changes, but the audio st still stays on it. But it's, it's really not too much of a difference as far as audio. I mean, you can't tell that. You can't, uh, let me see, let me rephrase that. Um, the audio stays the same, the audio soundtrack stays the same. The shot changes, but the audio soundtrack stays the same. But then it picks up, the original soundtrack picks up with this. Um, just remember that whatever video that you have here, actors walking forward, that's the name of that clip. When people are trying to resynchronize some of their video footage, sometimes what happens is things get out of sync and they're like, well, I don't know which shot goes with which audio. But it's telling you right here that this shot right here and this audio are, are married together. Okay. But when you do a video insert like that, we call that a video insert. Um, it's very effective. It's not as jarring to the, to the viewer. And it's not as jarring as if you were to just put in a new piece of audio with that. So let's do it again. <coughs> Does everybody understand how we got that? Just the video shot in and not the audio? Yeah. So now when we go to the next shot, we would have A1 and A2 selected back on because we want to keep all these little clips right here in your super bin we want to keep going with those so now as an editor and as a group editor you need to you need to decide if your um, 
if your viewer is smart enough to figure out where they're going. You could do an assumption cut here and have the, have the audience just assume they got to where they're going, or you could go back to this shot where they're entering the room. Okay? It's kind of up to you how you want to tell that story. Okay? So what you could do, your next shot could start right here, and they're cutting in. The next shot could be into, into the room. Okay? It's totally up to you. Let me show you both ways. We could do an assumption cut here. We'll put a mark in. I know Marcus's feet are still there. And it's kind of up to you as the editor. You could have them already there, or you could have them walk into the frame. Bless you. Bless you. Mark in. Okay, mark in, mark out, and let's do an overwrite. We're going to get rid of all this stuff. I don't want, I don't want to keep any of this stuff, so I'm going to hit overwrite. If I wanted to keep this stuff, I would hit what? Splice, Splice in. in. So I'm going to hit overwrite because I don't want this junk. Overwrite. It gets rid of everything after that point. Here's my edit. How'd that one look? The sound is very, very different because now we're inside of this other room. So we're not out in that hallway. Okay? So here's that's one version. Here's version one. So that's one way we could do it, or you could have have them already there. Everybody watch this. If I go mark out and mark in anything in highlighted blue. I can lift it. When I lift it, here's what happens. Cuts back in. If I hit extract, it joins the two together. Here's that edit. Okay. So it's it's kind of up to the editor how you want to edit this story together. If you have them have them on the outside and then have them walk in. It gives you a few more options to do it that way. Okay, for the, today we're going to bring them in like this. When they turn around that corner, right there is where I'm going to bring in that next shot. I'm going to put mark in. This is where I want the next shot to start. I've got V1 selected, A1, and A2. And since I've already got them going through the door, I need to match that shot right there. Mark in. Mark out. So in my source window, I've I've told the Avid what I want it, what that next what I want that next shot to be. <coughs> if I wanted to keep this footage right here, I would hit splice in. If I want to get rid of this footage right there, I'm going to hit overwrite. I'm going to hit overwrite. Here's the edit. Five. There's my poster. All right, there's one other edit here. And hopefully, we're reaching for the door handle the same way here. I'm going to call up the next shot. Might be a little break in continuity. Yes, we broke continuity. All right. Which hand is on the door handle? The right. It's the right hand. Whoa. All right. So we're going to go forward here and left. All right, this is good. We'll see if the audience catches this. I'm, I'll show your guys' video to third hour, and I'll show third hour's video to you guys. So here's our, here's our little break in continuity. Uh, we'll bring this back a little bit. <laughs> we'll go mark in. Where do you want the Where do you want uh, the next shot to come into the door handle? Right there. Right there. Mark in. So there's. Mark in. Five. 
five. Mark in, mark out. All right, and then we will put this in. So now here you can, you can do another thing too. If you don't want that audio to fluctuate all that much, we could take off A1 and A2 and just do a video insert. So let's try that once and see what it sounds like, or see what it looks like anyway. Here's the edits. Actually matched up pretty well. I'm surprised. The 00075 is the video, but we're taking the audio from 00074, and it was a perfect match. So that's without the audio edit. Let me do it with the audio edit. So I'm going to turn on my audio over here, A1, A2, and you're probably going to hear a big difference. Yeah, it's changing quite a bit. So we'll just do a video insert, overwrite. And actually, if you, here's one way to fix um, continuity errors. Before someone will reach for the, for the door handle, you can cut to the next shot and you, de you don't know which one they're going to use it, which one they're going to open it with. So let's do a undo. Let's bring this back right there. If we cut to that shot right there and then we back this one up, just a couple frames, we can fix those little continuity errors. Let's see if this still matches up. Yep. So at, at this point, we don't know which hand is going to go forward until we cut to that door. So that's one way to fix little continuity errors like that. Does that make sense? Okay, we're going to go get the next shot. In six, take one. In five, four, three. Back a little bit more? Or forward? Right there. Okay. Is there any motion on that door yet? No. What? What if she would have used her left hand for that shot, though? Then what would you have done? I, then you could st you could still I mean. Then you could cut you could cut it sooner, like right there. Yeah, but like for the, this one that's coming in. Oh oh, I don't know. <laughs> Punt. That would have sucked. The film would have never premiered. All right. Now you would have been doing a lot of retakes. Oh, yeah. Mark in. Next shot's going to come in here. I think we'll lay down the audio with this one also. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Get out. No. Oh, you guys will like this. You can play backwards audio in your, uh, whoops. That's backwards audio. Over right. See, like the hair opening the door seems like way too quick. Yep, I totally agree with you. So you can also edit on the action as the door is opening. That could also be our, our in point. So as the door is opening, right there. Overwrite. Another thing that's jarring too, I think, is the audio. Seems like there's too many like 
There's too many breaks in what? Well, these all these all these new clips are different angles. Yeah. Like we've got a camera here, we've got a camera here. That's two. Back to camera one, camera three, camera four, camera five. Okay. So all these little camera angles is helping tell the story about these two people that are going into this room. Thank you for asking. The talking scene. Come on, give me nice weather. I mean, like, it's, it's spring already. Like spring in Minnesota. Huh? And ready in five, four, three. <coughs> All right, this is, a, this is an advanced thing. I wasn't going to get to this until tomorrow. All right, we're going to add in. Can everybody listen? Sound of the hallway. All right. We want to add in the talking because we have a we have two wireless microphones on our actor and actresses, which we don't. But we recorded them, and it's, the audio sounds pretty good. So we're going to go down in our timeline. Anywhere down on the timeline, we're going to go right click, new audio track, mono. Right click, new audio track, mono. And as soon as I come around that corner, we're going to go mark in, or you can go mark in here. All right. When you add in audio tracks, you have to tell it where you want it to go. Right now, it thinks that I want to put the audio on track one and two, when indeed I want to put it on three and four. So I'm going to point down two to three and one to four. I'm going to deselect my video because I don't want that to be touched. And we're going to do an audio edit. Dude, I cannot believe how much snow we're going to be getting. I know. It's just like, come on, give me nice weather. I mean, like, it's, it's spring already. Like spring in Minnesota. Yeah, build a snowman. Oh, yeah. I want to build a snowman. Snowman's a mess. Yeah, have you seen that movie yet, Frozen? All right, so there's a, there's a point. <laughs> there, snowman. <laughs> what? It's just bad. Snowman. Snowman. Snow, Why'd snowman. you wipe balance oh. on the trash can? <laughs> take all that time setting up the shot for the trash can. I, because I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, what? Thank you. I wanted to prove to you that what we were going to do with this shot, I, I wanted people to like, like inquire, like, what are you doing? So Hollywood does this quite a bit, where you have like an actor and actress like across the river or by a lake, and they're talking. This is kind of how they do that, same type of, same type of scenario. All right, we're going to stop there for today. Have a good evening. I'll post this to YouTube.